Hello, this is Ruben Major. I am an instructor and program director, as well as the chief executive officer for EMS University. In this particular section, we're going to be discussing communication. Uh, we have enhanced 911 systems. This is where the dispatch center receives uh, information from the caller, and this information is displayed as far as the address, critical incident information, and all that to the mobile data terminals or computer screens and it's relayed by the dispatcher to the responding unit. So basically the idea here is that everybody's informed as to the system. Uh, we also have non-enhanced 911 systems which do not contain this type of information. And again this is kind of a very basic overview of the communications systems for emergency medical services. However, the general idea is that you do have the enhanced 911 and the regular 911 systems that do not have that information. Largely, the rural areas are still trying to catch up and get that information. So for this particular section, we have radios, repeaters, digital radio equipment, cell phones, and mobile ter terminal or mobile computer terminals. Uh, for radios, you have base stations, which is basically the center of operations. Your mobile radios, which are in your fire department engines or ambulances. And then your portable radios, which are the ones that you take off to the scene. And then as far as repeaters are concerned, repeaters are necessary in certain types of radio communications when the communication can't get as far as it needs to and without uh, having a relay of the signal and usually these repeaters are located on the tops of either very tall buildings or mountains so that people are able to communicate long distances without the information breaking up or without the communication breaking up rather and then the digital radio equipment is kind of a new thing that's going on now we have a lot of digital radios that are being used in different bandwidth for the communication of emergency medical services traffic and then cell phones also we're using those now and new things on the cusp are these mobile computer terminals they call them mobile data terminals in some places where the information is displayed to the providers and so that they can use this information for their charting or for their assessment when they get to the scene then we have online medical direction, which is a type of communication uh, that you are going to be doing and probably have already been doing out there. These are orders for medications that are not in your offline protocols or standing orders. It's a situation which may be out of the scope of practice for the EMT, or it may be a situation where the EMT needs to have further guidance or information about what to do in a particular situation. It's also uh, necessary for you to contact online medical direct direction for um, other issues such as refusals or anything that might be out of the ordinary. Whenever you talk to online medical direction you can get a hold of them by usually cell phone or radio traffic. Whenever you talk to online medical direction you should make sure that the information you're con conveying to them is very clear and concise and if you have questions about whatever orders that they give back to you it's probably a really good idea to make sure that you question them and ask for clarification and then also re-explain if necessary so that you make sure to get the right information. This is very important to limit your liability and also the physician's liability and whoever it is that you're talking to on on the phone or on the radio. Orders should be repeated back word for word to ensure clarity on both ends. This is also very good to minimize your liability because if you state word for word what they want you to do and then you do it it, it really makes it very difficult to prove that you've done anything wrong unless of course it's way out of your scope of practice and then you know differing minds can differ about the particular practice but 
in general it's a very good idea to make sure that you just do word for word information given out to medical direction should always be as accurate as possible and when you're talking on the radio you always want to wait about a, a half a second to a second before you push the button down and the reason being is because people inevitably will cut themselves off uh, the information isn't conveyed immediately when pressing the radio button and and so when you're trying to talk you're gonna cut yourself off about a second or so so again the best thing to do is just go ahead and push that down and wait for a second half a second two seconds and then start talking do not eat the microphone keep that microphone about two to three inches from your mouth and speak very clearly and slowly make sure that the information that you give is brief and to the point and you know they always say that it's a very important thing for you to start to talk in uh, plain language or use plain language as much as you possibly can so that the information you're conveying to others is not uh, within the code uh, or the 10 code system Granted, different protocols are going to require that you might use these codes. However, it is strongly discouraged so that you uh, maintain clarity in your communication. Also, you know, you want to avoid meaningless phrases like be advised or, you know, these sorts of things where you're just tying up unnecessary radio traffic. You want to avoid using the patient's names or personal information over the air. This information is not necessarily information that you always have to uh, avoid ha using on the radio. However, it is strongly encouraged that you do not use this information over the radio because you do increase the chances of uh, any kind of suit or liability by doing so. So make sure that you are impartial. Don't uh, cuss or use any profanity or slang on the radio and do not diagnose. Remember that this is a recorded line so any of the information that you give uh, can be used against you if something happens. So again this is a recorded line you can go back to it and you can listen to the communication that you gave. Very important to make sure that you're careful whenever you're talking on the radio or you're talking on your cell phone to medical direction. Uh, interpersonal communications, just kind of talk about this really quick. Uh, we're almost done with this section, but interpersonal communications, remember the most communication is nonverbal. So making and keeping eye contact is the most important and effective way of communicating with your patient. When it's practical, you want to position yourself at a lower level than the patient. So when I'm, on, when I'm on scene and I'm dealing with a patient or doing a, a patient interview, I, I really want to make sure I'm not towering over them because what happens when you tower over a patient is the patient doesn't necessarily trust you in general. So you're going you're gonna to kind of create this atmosphere of where they think that you think they're, you're better than them and they might not be willing to trust what you say. They might uh, be hesitant to follow your direction or answer your questions, those sorts of things. So very important to, to maintain good rapport by keeping yourself at a lower level than them. Be honest. You know, you, you can't go wrong with honesty. You know, it's also very important to make sure that you use layperson terminology. Do not complicate matters by making your speech complicated and using intense medical terminology they just won't they won't understand unless they're in the healthcare field watch your body language try not to move around a whole bunch keep yourself calm speak clearly and slowly and distinctly and then show respect to them it's also very important for you to avoid any personal opinions or um, and to act in a confident manner and also to allow the patient uh, enough time to answer your questions don't just keep answer asking them questions over and over again uh, without getting any answers. Make sure you really slow down and get the information from them. You might end up having language barriers or visual and audio defects might make things a little bit difficult. 
you know, you're just going to want to deal with these things as best as you possibly can in this situation. There's also impaired mental capacities such as diabetes, stroke, and Alzheimer's that you'll want to take into consideration. So when we talk about how these things might change the situation that you're in, with the language barrier, you know, it may be a good idea to see if there is some way that you can get somebody else that's in the house who might know the language that you're speaking and the language the patient's speaking and be able to translate for you. As far as the visu visual and audio defects, you know, for people who are having a difficult time seeing a lot of communication, uh, oral communication is going to help them out and then hopefully there's somebody else that's on the scene that's able to assist them, uh, you know, in other aspects. As far as audio def uh, deficits, these are interesting situations. If you don't know sign language, or don't have an interpreter available, it may, your best strategy may be to write things down on paper and have communication with them that way. Uh, if they're altered or impaired in some way, shape, or form, you may end up having to do your uh, evaluation as you would an unconscious patient. Just do the best job that you possibly can. Try not to get frustrated. Maintain your confidence level and be respectful to the to the patient in these circumstances for these impaired mental capacities such as diabetes uh, stroke or alzheimer's disease we're really talking about some neuro uh, neurological deficits so you know we'll kind of go over a little bit the uh, of these more if you're you're going on to the medical section and discuss these in depth, but these are some special considerations in our communication. We may want to, we may we may want to be thinking about, and that's going to do it for this particular section.